Good morning. Today's session, let us discuss about animal tissues and their functions. Before that, let us recall what is meant by a tissue. Tissue is group of cells which are having similar function and similar structure. Based on the functions in animals, the tissues are classified into four types. The first one, epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue helps for protection. Epi means outer, thelium means membrane. So epithelium serves for protection. So based on the location and their functions, epithelial tissue is classified into squamous epithelium, cuboidal epithelium, columnar epithelium, and ciliated epithelium, and finally into glandular epithelium. Next one, muscular tissue. So muscular tissue helps for movement, responsible for movement and locomotion. So striated muscles, non-striated muscles, and cardiac muscles are the different categories in muscular tissue. So striated muscles are responsible for voluntary actions, non-striated muscles helpful for involuntary, whereas cardiac muscle is situated in the heart. Then coming to the next, connective tissue which helps in binding, support and transport. These are classified to areolar tissue, adipose tissue, the tendon, ligament, cartilage, bone and blood. The next one is nervous system which brings control and coordination in the body and helps to respond for external and internal stimulus. To know more about the tissues, we are supposed to do some activities. So for the, to observe the epithelial cells in the skin, we are supposed to get chicken from the nearby market along with skin. We are supposed to soak it in hydrochloric acid before the experiment to make soft in the skin. After that, collect the uh, chicken in a dissection box and with the help of the dissection kit like scissors and scalpel, forceps, try to separate the skin and put it on a slide and observe under microscope. If we observe under microscope, we can find cells like, we can find the cells like very linear manner without any intercellular spaces. Is there any, uh, the cells are any way interrupted? Are you finding any interruptions in this line? No, the cells are very much continuous without leaving any intercellular spaces. We can do the same activity to observe the muscle also. Instead of skin, we are using muscle here. Then we can find structures like this. This is the muscle cell which we find in the chicken. Then we can observe blood also. For this purpose, we need to prick uh, with a sterilized syringe, syringe and put it a drop of blood on a slide and we observe under microscope we find different kinds of cells like neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, platelets and erythrocytes. Erythrocytes in the sense red blood cells. We can observe bone also but to observe the bone we suppose to keep the uh, chicken along with bone for overnight in the vinegar solution. So based on these, all these experiments, uh, all these activities, we come to a conclusion that here within the animal body there are different kinds of cells and their function is also vary. So let us have a look on the epithelial tissue in detail. Epithelial tissue, this is a simple squamous epithelium. The location of the simple squamous epithelium is air sacs of lungs and the lining of heart, blood vessels and lymphatic vessels. See if we can observe here where the transportation occurs by a permeable membrane, simple squamous epithelium is present. Here its function also allows material to pass through by diffusion and filtration and secretes lubricating substances. Then we observe the permanent slide of a cuboidal epithelium which is collected from the school laboratory. Uh, we are observing cells, the cells are appearing like cubes, that's what it is called as cuboidal epithelium. It is present in ducts and secretory portions of so small glands and in the kidney tubules. 
So its main function is secretes and absorbs and also very much helpful in giving mechanical support. The next one is simple columnar epithelium. If we observe the permanent slide of simple columnar epithelium, we are finding cilia, columnar, they are arranged like columns, long and elongated cells which are supplying with cilia. So these ciliated tissue are in bronchus, uterine tubes and uterus uh, and the digestive tract and in the urinary bladder. It helps for absorption and secretion. So here we can find different kinds of epithelial tissues like pseudo stratified columnar epithelium, stratified squamous epithelium. This kind of cells mostly present in the skin because the, they arrange like layers. It is simple uh, squamous epithelium only but it is arranged in the form of layers. That is what stratified squamous epithelium. This mostly present in the skin. Then we can observe more varieties here, stratified cuboidal epithelium and stratified columnar epithelium, transitional epithelium. Some of the epithelium helps in the formation of glands also, which is called as glandular epithelium. The next one, connective tissue. So based on the functions and the locations, the connective tissue, which is described as areolar tissue, adipose tissue, then tendon, ligament, bone, cartilage, blood. So your blood and lymph these are comes under fluid connective tissues. So let us have a look on the connective tissue. Very first we start our description with areolar tissue. Areolar tissue is located around the blood vessels and the nerves. You can find here elastic fibers and fibroblast the cells which are present in the areolar tissue is called as fibroblast. They secrete these fiber like projections which held the internal organs in position. So when you tilt your body what happened to your internal organs? Does they displaced? No, they never displace. When you tilt or move front or back whatever your internal organs are held in position because of the areolar tissue only. So it is helpful in package the things and connecting and joins the organs and the tissues. It also helps in repair. The next one is adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is helpful for storage of fat. It is present in between just beneath the skin and internal organs inter, in a space between internal organs also filled with adipose tissue. So its main function not only for storage of fat but also it can act as heat insulator means it protects our body from becoming cool or temperature variations it could not mean. The next one is bone, bone is the next which is the heart comparatively with the other tissues. So we can, how many bones we have in the skeletal system, 206 bones are present. Bone is very much hard because calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate because of these two substances the bone is too hard and the cells which are present in bone are called osteocytes. These osteocytes we can find in the transfer section of a bone we are finding the osteocytes which are secreting the salts. What are the salts for manufacturing of bone? Calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. These are secreted by the osteocytes and the skeletal system is made up of with bones which gives a shape and support to the entire body. And not only this, bone is another important function that is it generating the RBC, erythropoiesis. So generating new blood cells in the hollow space of the bone which is called bone marrow. The next one is cartilage. Cartilage is a connective tissue we can find in the many areas of our body. Our external ears are made up of with cartilage, the tip of nose is made up of with cartilage and tip of bones cartilage is present, ribs, tips of ribs cartilage is present. Some of the fishes like shark the entire skeleton is made up of with cartilage. Most of the vertebrate embryos we did not find bone but cartilage is present. So cartilage is hard but comparatively bone not that much hard as comparatively with the bone. 
this is about cartilage. Coming to the next ligament and tendons. So, here are the ligaments, we are finding ligaments here. So, these ligaments have fiber like projections which are helping to attach the bones at uh, uh, joints because of the fibers. These fibers made up of with a protein called collagen whereas tendon connects muscles to bone. Because of this ligament and tendon only we can fold our joints otherwise it is not possible folding of our joints become very tough. Then the next one blood, blood is the fluid connective tissue. So, mostly about blood many facts given by Carl Landstina in 1900 he divided the blood groups in uh, blood into four groups those are A, B, AB and O. These are four kinds of blood groups which are described by Carl Landstina and he said that people with AB blood group are universal recipients they can get blood from any other group and according to him blood group O is the universal donor they can give blood to any other groups. Now, let us have a look on interesting facts about blood and its composition. Next. Blood and its composition. Blood, blood is classified based on the granules which are present granulocytes and agranulocytes. So, in their plasma, in the cytoplasm, grain like projections they are called as granulocytes and a granulocytes they do not have any grain granule like projections in the cytoplasm which are called as a granulocytes. They further divide into eosinophils, basophils and neutrophils. Eosinophils are also called as acidophils. The dye which they react when we are staining based on that they named as acido, baso and neutrophils. Whereas a granulocytes divided into lymphocytes and monocytes. This is where the white blood cells in particular lymphocytes and monocytes are also called as scavengers of the body because they have killing effect on the bacteria. Then how to find a blood group? For this we supposed to do an activity to find out about our blood group. For this we need instruments like needles we find instruments like needles, gas, antisera A and antisera B and anti RH factor D. So, let us have a video here how to test the blood. So, for this we need to take a glass light. The person who is giving a drop of blood should be sterilized by applying any antiseptic solution with the help of cotton and with a sterilized needle just prick it and collect 3 drops of blood on a glass slide. Then carefully while you are pricking with the needle do not use much force it may got injured. So, that is what apply little force and prick it collect 3 drops of blood on a slide. Gently you press it and to collect blood samples for different people use different needles. Do not use the same needle it may be hazardous. So, you collected 3 drops of blood on a slide and we are going to apply antisera A and antisera B to the another drop and then finally, the last drop was added with RH factor RHD. What is RH here? RH is a protein which present within the blood it is called as RH positive which is not present which is called as RH negative. So, you can observe clearly and carefully and mix the sample with the antisera by using a toothpick. Take care here do not mix the samples use different toothpicks to mix the samples otherwise we may not get proper result. So, carefully you mix the samples with the antisera A and antisera B and with the RH factor. Use different toothpicks this precaution we are supposed to take otherwise we do not get proper result of it. 
then wait for a while. Our H factor is not react immediately, it's take time. So don't give up immediately. Let us wait for one minute. What happened the result? Let us see. You can find here in the second sample agglutination, small clumps you are finding here. The remaining two are, uh, it do not show any sort of clumping. So here with the help of an instruction manual, we can find the blood groups. There is an instruction manual. Yes. If clumping occurs with anti A and no clumping in anti B and the type of blood is A, A blood group this is. Means here we did not mention that is A positive or negative. If RH also clumping occurs, we consider that is positive means A positive. If no clumping in the antisera, which consider as A negative. Then same way, clumping occurs with antisera A, anti B no, type of blood is A. Here coming to the next column, antisera A, there is no clumping in the sample, but antisera B clumping occurs, consider that the blood group is B. Already I told you about RH factor. If clumping occurs with RHD, then you consider that is positive, means B positive. No clumping, B negative. So here antisera A and antisera B, both, both the samples clumped with the uh, seras and reacted and clumped, then consider the blood group is AB. And there is no clumping with the two cases, consider the blood group is O. So in this way, we can use the blood kit blood testing kit we can find our blood groups.